Thank you for tuning in to this Autism Hangout Special Report. As you know, every day we are searching the world to look for encouraging news about our special kids. And today's special guest has all sorts of encouragement. The book is called Islands of Genius. Now, why is that relevant? Because in the case of kids with autism, savant-like tendencies may occur with a frequency as high as one out of ten. So Autism Hangout, I'd like to have you welcome, please, author Dr. Daryl Treffert. Dr. Treffert, welcome to Autism Hangout. Well, thank you for inviting me. Appreciate it. Well, and I have to make a caveat here because Skype isn't cooperating. The, the video feed may not sync up, but the audio feed is real time. You are a clinical professor of psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and you have worked with savants and you have researched this rare condition for nearly 50 years. You were also a consultant to the movie Rain Man and you worked with Mr. Kim Peek, the inspiration for that particular film. But clearly in reading your book you have so much vast experience in this condition called savant syndrome. So let's get started with this. Can you give us a definition and then tell us how you got interested in this? Sure. Savant syndrome is a rare but spectacular condition in which persons with disabilities, including but not limited to autism, have some island of genius that stands in stark contrast to overall uh, handicap. It occurs in as frequently as one in ten autistic persons, and it's always associated with a, uh, with a remarkable memory as well. My interest in Savant syndrome began uh, my first day on the job as a psychiatrist, I had the opportunity of starting a children's unit, a psychiatric hospital here in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and we had about uh, uh, 25 autistic uh, youngsters. Uh, this was way back in 1962 when there were no such units uh, around the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, of these uh, 25 youngsters, three of them particularly caught my eye. One lad had memorized the bus system in the city of Milwaukee and knew that those routes better than the bus driver. Another lad, if you put a 250-piece jigsaw puzzle in front of him, with the picture side down, he'd put it together just with looking at the geometric shapes. And another lad was a walking almanac of history. So I became interested in this uh, startling juxtaposition of ability with disability in these, uh, in these youngsters. Dr. Treffert did a marvelous job of including some stories in here, a number of stories about some absolutely remarkable people. But in addition to those stories then, he pulled the wisdom out there as to how you may, able, may be able to help your child uh, discover if they have some of these tendencies and these skills or not. Now, I know that savant-like skills fall into five categories according to your book, and those categories are art, music, calendar calculating, lightning calculating, and mechanical or special skills. And you also describe this single skill, which is the way it occurs most often. It can occur with more than one, but usually it's a single, as being uh, the ability to access exceedingly deep but very narrow memory and you also said it's mostly right-brained. Right. The skills that you see in the salon, uh, art, music, calendar character, even the ones that you mentioned, are right-brained skills. And that's because in the salon there is a dysfunction of the left hemisphere with right brain compensation. And it turns out that not only in salon syndrome but in autism itself there is a left hemisphere uh, dysfunction and so uh, this sometimes surfaces then as these uh, uh, startling right brain skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you also talked about something that's of particular interest to me as it relates to music. You, you noted that, uh, first off, there's a young man on the spectrum that most people have heard of called Leslie Lemke, and you just you detailed a marvelous story about him and his mom, May. But Leslie is blind, he is mentally impaired, but his, his musical genius is what sets him apart. And you call this the musical triad. And apparently, this is one of the more frequently occurring of the savant tendencies. It is. Go back in history, uh, you'll find that, uh, as I said, savant syndrome is rare. But within this rare condition, with, with, with rather conspicuous regularity, is this triad. Mm -hmm. And some of the well-known savants at the present time in the UK, Leslie Nemke here, Tony Deploy in this country, and a number of... Uh, Rex Clack in, in California have this uh, this triad, which is so striking uh, with its regularity, and as I said, what is otherwise a rare condition. Let's take this to a practical application as it relates to our kids. How do we focus on the abilities of our kids, rather than the disabilities, to see if there might possibly be some savant-type skills? How do we stimulate them? How do we bring something like this to the surface? 
Well, I think uh, I think the most important lesson that I've learned in these 50 years is to look for that ability, however, in whatever quantity it exists. It doesn't have to exist at the savant level. Mm -hmm. You look for what I call that island of intactness. And every child, no matter how disabled or how disturbed, there is that island of intactness. And the teacher or the parent or somebody latches onto that uh, island of intactness and you nourish it and, and, and you reward it and, and you reinforce it. And mm -hmm. from that, uh, it, it, it blossoms out into better language, better social skills, and, and, and better daily living skills. Mm -hmm. And so it's what I call training the talent. Mm -hmm. I get so many from my website. I get, every day I get two or three, I've got a son or daughter who inquiries, usually from parents of autistic youngsters. And one of the things that was missing in my earlier book, Extraordinary People, was, a, was what I call a So What Now chapter. And so three of the chapters in this book address specifically music, art and math and have ideas and, and, and um, hints for parents as to how to engage that child. In other words, if, uh, how, if it's calendar calculating, well, what, you know, what use is that? Well, it is not a frivolous skill. It's not a, gee whiz, look at that. It is, in fact, that's the, the language that that child is using to communicate. Mm -hmm. And so you, you latch onto that and, and, and uh, try to uh, uh, train the talent. And as we look at ability rather than disability. Another thing about savants, which has been fascinating to me, is that uh, that they know things they never learned. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie Lemke has never had a music lesson in his life. He's blind, can't read music. But he knows professional musicians have said, that man knows more than I know, and I've studied music my whole life. And he was born with that music chip or with that musical knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I call that genetic memory. And I think we all are uh, have a great deal of uh, come with software attached. You know, we tend to think of ourselves as having been born with a blank disk and we become what we put on our disk. That's not true. We're, we come with all sorts of software attached. And the question is, how can you tap that? When is your book going to be out and where can people go to get information on your book? Uh, the book will be out in April uh, 15th of this year. And it's uh, currently on Amazon for pre-order. Okay. And, there is some information about the book uh, there. And uh, Dr. Trefford, how can people get in touch with you? Well, I, they, the best way to get in touch with me is uh, with email, which is, I don't mind giving that out, it's, it's Darrell, T D A R O L D T uh, at uh, charter.com, uh, or charter.net, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and the other way is uh, if they go to the Savant Syndrome website, which is www.savantsyndrome.com, you'll find there are some links that uh, will uh, get them back to me. And I'm anxious to hear from parents about their success stories and, and, and uh, as well as their questions. And one of the real satisfactions of this whole journey of mine, which is really what the book is about, my, my long journey with Savants, is uh, to help parents discover those um, those abilities and, and, and to uh, not focus on disability. And some of the, the most gratifying letters I've gotten back is, is, is from parents who said, you know, Doc, uh, we, we did this and, and, and lo and behold, you know, we lashed out of this and, and, and our son is, uh, he's becoming more social, better language developed, better daily living skills. And so that these are not frivolous Gee whiz, look at that skills. These are, this is the way these people are communicating to us. And so uh, when I get one of those letters back of appreciation, that makes all the work very worthwhile. Well, one of the things that's most gratifying to me about being at Autism Hangout is I get to help find people like you, Dr. Trevor, <laughs> that are so encouraging <clears throat> and, and just helping, helping us, helping our kids discover themselves. Thank you for being with us today. I hope we get a chance to talk again soon. I can see that there's lots of fertile ground here for more discussion. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. And thank you, Autism Hangout. I'll be back again soon with another special report.